this morning the glory of his sacrifice. So we're going through chapter by chapter, verse by verse through the scriptures. And uh, let's turn in our Bibles to John chapter 12, John 12, 24 through 50. John 12, 24 through 50. But I'm going to begin reading uh, verses 24 through 36. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good, good to have everybody here in the house of the Lord. Amen. All right, let's uh, look at 1224. And it says, i got to get right to that spot there. Oh, you know what? I was still in Mark. <laughs> Mark. Well, I love the gospel of Mark, but i got to be in John 1224 there. Yeah, here it is. Okay, 24. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves him, my father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. <clears throat> and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Verse 29. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world, and now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. The people answered him, We have heard from the law that Christ remains forever, and how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? And Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light will be with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, Believe in the light that you may become sons of the light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your words, the light of your words. Lord, we just rejoice in your words. We rejoice with your people. Thank you for Dave and Debbie Detman being back, Lord God, and they're back from their mission, Lord. Bless them. Bless your people. Thank you, Lord, for, Lord, each and every person that's here, God, that you want to pour out your love in each person's heart, Lord, and just bring us to a new level, Lord, of understanding and wisdom and grace and abundant life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Here's some kids, and this is what they said from their uh, children's church, from their perspective. They said, Noah's wife was called Joan of Arc. Now, we know that we don't know Noah's wife's name, right? And Joan of Arc was a, 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 she was a brave woman, right? But it just that the two are not there. So this is the kid's understanding. And one, one kid said, uh, the epistles were the wives of the apostles, so the epistles were wives of the apostles, so they kind of missed it there. But And then Moses got the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. <laughs> so it was Mount Sinai, right? It wasn't Sinai. Um, but it's, it's okay. Now kids, you know, they're learning and we can understand and we giggle at it. But when adults don't know the word and, and they willfully misquote it, then there, there is a problem. And so God wants us to know the word of God. 
And someone once said, people don't reject the Bible because it contradicts itself. They reject the Bible because it contradicts them. Right? And, and folks might not uh, know what the, uh, folks know what the Bible says, they just don't like it. They don't like the way it's said. And, and because in our conscience, just like we all know we need to drink water, everybody, that's the first thing you should drink in the morning is drink your water, right? Before coffee, before tea, because it'll, it, it hydrates your body. Everybody knows that we need hydration. And everybody knows basically that we need God. And the clarity of the scriptures is, is just brilliant. But people, just it's too much light for some. But for others, we say, bring it on. Amen? Bring on the sunshine of God. So we want to grow in understanding so that we're not left without wisdom. And that's why people make so many bad decisions. And you wonder, how, how did they make that decision? It's because there was a loss of wisdom and understanding. And God gives generously to all who ask for wisdom. He gives it to us. He imparts it to us. He wants us to walk wisely because he wants us to overcome. He wants us to have that godlike nature. And he wants, to, he wants to teach us great and mighty things. He walks with us and talks with us along life's narrow way. But the more that we move towards the light, and that's why we're here to move towards the light. I do believe that uh, there was a... Another wake-up call possibility for us when we see a spy balloon from China floating slowly across the United States taking pictures, and then it's not shot down until it gets all the way across the nation. They may say they were not wiring it in, but why didn't they take it out in the beginning? But what we're saying is people are spying to do us wrong and harm. Judgment is coming. But the king is coming. And we, we see these things and we say, wow, you mean there's another nation that would want to take over the United States of America? Yes, there is. And if we do not repent and turn to God and stay close with Jesus Christ, we'll lose our nation just like every other nation has lost their way. And that's why we need God. We need Jesus. We need to take his word seriously. And also we know that our king is coming and the rapture is real. And I saw that movie, it was so good, the, the Rise of the Antichrist with Kevin Zorba. Once again, it's a redo of The Left Behind, Tim LaHaye, Jerry Jenkins, and it was done brilliantly. It was all up to date, but it's another opportunity to say, amen. When I look up at that moon, how many of you enjoyed that nice full moon? It was so beautiful. It's been up there. It'll be up there again tonight. Beautiful, beautiful green grass and just when we see things, just give glory to God. Give glory to God. And it says in John 12, 24, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. So what Jesus was saying is that he's a grain of wheat. He's a grain of wheat. And he's willing to go into the the ground and he's willing to die so that the wheat would multiply that the wheat and, and that that if he if he was re retained in heaven and he never came down well he'd be great and happy in heaven but there'd be no sinners redeemed to be with them in heaven right so he wanted to come down and and be planted so that he could grow and, and that the kingdom could spread and that you and I could be saved and have a future and a hope and have security, have a good marriage, have a good life. Amen. Have confidence as a single person. Have a sound mind. Glory to God. Because God wants to minister to us and, 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 and he's called us as well to die to self, to die to self and, and to go into the ground. Um, we have to take risks when we obey God. In, in, um, we have character attacks on us when, when we're doing the right thing and people come against us, but we're standing with the word of God. There's also going to be challenges in your health. There's going to be challenges with your family. There's going to be challenges with your living situation. When you die to self, 
and you put Christ first, but God is in all of these challenges. But a lot of people, they want to play it safe all the time. They want to play it safe. If we played it safe, we never would have gone to Bible college. If we stayed in our comfortable apartment in San Clemente and, and I surfed every day after work, you know, we wouldn't have been able to win, you know, and plant churches in Holland. We, we wouldn't have been able to move to San Diego. But you see, there's, there's sacrifice involved all along the way, but it's, it's a joy when Jesus is in it, right? That sacrifice of your lifestyle. And family, put Jesus first. You know, we had trouble with, with both sets of parents. Valerie's parents were not serving the Lord. Her mother was backslidden, and they persecuted us. And then we had some stress with my Christian family because they wanted to stay in, in, in some of their old ways. And, and then we got filled with the Holy Spirit, and we started praying in tongues. And then that caused some division in the Christian family. But we stood firm, and in the end, amen, both of our parents were spirit-filled, tongue-talking, amen. And they went to heaven in the power of the Holy Spirit. And both of my other uh, in-laws, they both got saved at the end. And, uh, but it was, it's, a, it's a journey. It's like putting Christ first. Put him first and keep him there. And God will take care of all the rest. But that's what Jesus is saying. Let that corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. And if it, and if it dies, it'll bring forth much fruit. It'll bring forth fruit. And it's fruit for today. It's fruit for tomorrow. And the beautiful thing about the Lord is that it's fruit for heaven. Because a lot of the things that we do down here is going to pay off in heaven. Glory to God. It's going to pay off down here as well. But there's going to be also a harvest in heaven. So it says in verse 25, He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. So many people down here, they want good food and clothing and entertainment. And guess what they live for? Food, clothing, houses, entertainment. And all those things God will provide. But if those things, you know, one of the first commandments, that's what we've got to be reminded of what the Ten Commandments are. The first one is thou shall have no other gods before me. The second one, thou shalt not make any graven image. Well, right there, it shows a lot of the problems in America, right? Is that we're not worshiping the Lord. We're worshiping the money. We're worshiping, right, security. We're worshiping our entertainment. And, and, but that's all a part of our lost human nature. Let's not get so down on ourselves. That's why we repent and turn to God. But we have to continually re reflect and put him first because satan wants to you know climb his way up there and say you know, and then we have, no i rebuke you satan in jesus name jesus is first and uh, and and i love him so we have to keep putting him there and the lord will help us and then 1226 says if anyone serves me let him follow me and where i am there my servant will be also if anyone serves me, him my father will honor. So we're serving the Lord Jesus. We're living a life after him, after that pattern, that, that moral pattern, that high ground. Remember how Jesus taught people and how he respected people, men and women. And, and he, honored, he honored them and, and said, you're made in God's image. And he taught them how to overcome their anger. He taught them how to overcome their jealousy. He taught them how to overcome their lusts. He taught them how. He modeled it. He showed it. That's why in, you know, in, in modern society, what they've done, uh, you know, to say that, that Jesus was immoral and that Jesus, it, it's a blasphemy, is that he lived that moral life because he kept his eye on the Father, and he showed us how that you and I can overcome. So the world wants to bring Jesus down. That's why we have to raise him up through the scriptures. That's why we go to the scriptures. The scriptures is our life. The scriptures is our map book. The scriptures tell us, and then where it's confirmed in life. It's confirmed through history. It's confirmed through archaeology. It's confirmed on every account that Jesus honors his word and that we can trust in his word, and he will honor those who follow him for eternal life. And it's not just in this life. We're, 
you know, God has things planned in this life and in the one to come, and, and they're all exciting things, and we don't want to miss out. So John 12, 27 says, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. So this is before the Garden of Gethsemane, but Jesus is saying, I am not looking forward to suffering. I am not looking forward to the pain that I'm going to go through. I'm not looking forward to, you know, taking on the sins. He's the sinless Lamb of God. He is counting the cost, but let's not be mistaken. He wants to do it. It's just like when we went on the mission field, it was scary to leave behind our family, to speak another language, to go into a sin sin-struck city like Amsterdam and take your young family there. It was, it was, it was scary, but we did it because God called us and God's calling kept us. But Jesus, let's not be mistaken, he wanted to go to the cross, but he was also counting the cost. And, um, and that's why he wants us to count the cost too. And he wants us to think about what he did for us when we get all tempted, we, should, you know, we need to remember our Savior. The Apostle Paul said this, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So we have to see that Jesus suffered something that you and I would never have to suffer. He was separated from from God, he bore the sins, all the nastiness of humanity upon himself so that you and I could be set free, so you and I could have a clean slate, so you and I could run and rejoice and because he did it for us. And that's why for us, taking communion and thinking on that, it, it's cleansing, it's powerful because it's true. He loves us and he did that for us. And John... 12, 28 says this, Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. And sometimes we get a little bit heavy with what's going on down here, the inflation and the wokeism and, and, and a lot of the social you know, pressures and taking away parking places and more bike lanes. Did you hear about the, the, the doctor who was being a good doctor and he's riding his bike and an illegal immigrant hit him and knocked him off his bike and then stabbed him to death? So he was riding his bike. And, uh, but the reality is, is, that, uh, is that it's not any safer on a bike lane. And, and, and you know where the safety is? Pray. Pray when you're riding your bike. Pray when you're walking. Pray. Pray when you're at the park. Pray in your car. Pray. Amen. And thank God for his angels. He puts his angels in charge over you. I love that. In charge over you. Amen. I want those angels in charge over me, right? And that means that he assigned an angel to you to, to protect you and to, and to look after you. And it's, it's never, It never hurts to say, hey, thanks. Thank you. Amen. For those angels out there. But, but the reality is, is that we need to speak like, like Jesus. I'm going to glorify God. And when you glorify God in the midst of the trial and the struggle and what's happening in the politics and everything else, and, and um, you know, it's just that. And then guess what? He's glorifying God, and, and there's, there's so much here. And, and, and a voice came from heaven, and he says, And I have both glorified it, and we'll glorify it again. Now listen to the stubbornness of some of these people. God himself spoke to this group of people. God's voice spoke. But some of them don't believe in the supernatural. They don't believe in miracles. So they have to come up with an explanation. And they said, instead of saying, my God, God just spoke to me. Right? And Jesus and all these miracles. But they said, oh, oh, it was, it was thunder. It was thunder. They wanted to put a natural explanation on something that was totally supernatural. And then some people are saying, well, I, I, I don't know if I really heard it. Or, or, and, and, and so because they didn't want to believe. 
in the fact that God spoke to them and said he confirmed that, that he is his son. He confirmed that, that, his, that the call of God is upon his life. And when you and I glorify God, guaranteed when you're on, your, you're on that heavy moment and you're feeling some depression, begin to glorify God. I will praise the Lord. I, I'm turning on my praise tape, amen, and I'm going to praise the Lord. Jesus, thank you for your shed blood. And all of a sudden, you're going to get that glory, and, and, and the presence of God is going to come and lift us up, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So Jesus is glorifying him, and even then, they don't want to hear the Father's voice, even though he spoke to them. Oh, no, it's thunder. It's thunder. It's, it's, I, did we really hear anything? Uh, duh, I think I need some more medical marijuana. Do you know the elderly are getting hooked on medical marijuana just like you can't believe? And, and they're like, well, I guess the young people are doing it. And, and now, you know what? It's like, guess what? you got to stay sharp. The devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I mean, you want to watch it? I mean, don't watch It's a scary movie about these two killer lions that came out in Africa, and they were trying to build a railroad and take the gospel in in Kenya. And, and this is a true story. The lions are in the Smithsonian Institute. And these lions did not want, and the devil possessed these lions, and they became man-eaters, and they were devouring like, like 30 people on the work party devouring them, just shredding them, just taking off their skin. And it was just, it was brutal. And uh, it's uh, Ghosts in the Darkness, the movie is called. And so finally, Val Kilmer, in, in starring in this movie, it's a true story, his mama was praying for him. <laughs> and he got the gun and he shot one of the lions. And then, and then Remington, this really skilled hunter, he gets taken out and eaten by the lion. And finally, he has to shoot the second lion and the railroad went through, and the gospel went through. But see how Satan, we can, we've got to stay sharp. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, stay sharp. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you look sharp. Amen. 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 But the reality is we've got to, we really got to be alert, especially in these last days. All right, so 1230. It's not 1230. It's, it's John 1230. It says this, Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come uh, because of me, but for your sake. And then 31 says, now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Glory be to God. Shout hallelujah. Is that when Jesus died on the cross, he defeated Satan. He literally defeated him. Now we're on the mop-up crew. Now it means that he's a formidable foe and he's still going about doing terrible things of what he's, what's happening in the Ukraine, what's happening in Nigeria, right? Where, where these Boko Haram is coming in and taking out and killing, killing just Christians that are there. They're just worshiping God, taking them out, taking their daughters captive, evil. We're talking about evil, but Satan, his time is short. He is judged. And when you and I stand in humility and we stand in faith in him, we have authority over him. We do not have to bow to him. We do not have to be intimidated by him. But we have the name of Jesus. But Jesus defeated Satan at the cross. He is a defeated foe. And that's why like a lot of all this stuff is speeding up around us. It's because, you know, the word of God, we're in the end times, we're in the last days, and all these things are just... You know, it seemed to be falling apart, but falling into place. And it seems intimidating. And, and, but with Jesus, he's already defeated the enemy. He's coming back again. And he's coming for his bride. And, and we're going to be with him when the seven-year tribulation breaks out. And it's about ready to break out. And we see all the signs around us. And that's why we don't want to be left behind. We just want to be right with God, live an abundant life. John 12, 32 says, And if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. And what he's saying is, is that he has to be lifted up. Now, they, they didn't understand what he was talking about. They said in verse 33, they said, 
signifying by what death he would die. And then 34 says, And the people answered him, We have heard from the law that Christ remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? So what Jesus is saying is this. They didn't understand, even the disciples did not understand yet, that he was talking about the cross. He, he had repeated himself about three or four times, telling them, I'm going to be you know, crucified, I'm going I'm to go to... And they, they're like, no, no. I mean, they, they, they didn't grasp it. And now they were thinking, this crowd... And, and by the way, this crowd, this is the last... These verses is the last time he's speaking publicly to the people. This is the last time. These words are the last words that Jesus speaks publicly. After this, John 13, it's all privately to his disciples. And then he goes and he speaks some words from the cross and, and he comes back in the ascension. But these are some of the last words to the people of the world, right? That, that the public uh, people that are listening to him. And they're saying, well, where are you going? I mean, where are you going? And he says, unless I be lifted up, I've got to draw all men to myself. So here's the thing. When we see Jesus lifted up, it draws people to Christ, but it also draws sinners to hate him. Because when people look to the cross, if they don't see redemption, if they don't see love, they begin to despise the cross. They begin to hate the one on the cross. And so people have to make a decision down here in this life. This is not here. We're not here forever. America is not going to be here forever. Is that we're here to make a decision, and we got to make that decision in this lifetime. So Jesus said, "Make the decision." You see, you see, I'm going to be on the cross, and they said, "But you were supposed to live forever." But see, He is going to live forever. In fact, Isaiah nine seven says this: "Of the increase of His government and peace, there will be no end." Upon the throne of David and over His kingdom. To order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. So, yes, Jesus is going to be forever and ever. And you and I are going to live forever and ever. But he has to. He has to go to the cross. And we have to see him on the cross so that we can, you know, just, just humble ourselves. And, and allow him to change us from glory to glory. We can see how people, do you see people around us hardening their hearts and running away from the cross? But never give up praying for loved ones. Never, ever give up praying for those that are lost. It's, it can be at the final moment, but we need to intercede. But it says in Daniel 7:14, Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. So it's an everlasting kingdom. He died that the nations would know him. Now the nations, the ethnos is, is, is in heaven. There's going to be people from every tribe, kindred, nation, and tongue around the throne of God. People from every color, every background, every, amen, social, economic, they're going to be around the throne of God. Because those people looked to the cross and they found salvation. They looked to the cross and their sins were, were forgiven. They looked to the cross and they became radiant. They became overcomers in this life at the cross. And then other people look at the cross and they want to mock the cross. And they, and they, want, to, they want to pull away from it and... Uh, but, you know, when we were in our rebellion, we didn't like the cross either. When we were in our rebellion, we were running from God. And, uh, and that's why God has mercy. He wants us to have mercy. We're, not, we're just saying that we need to keep, you know, keep preaching the cross to your loved ones and what Jesus did. And, um, and hopefully they're going to come in before the rapture because I do not want to be left behind. 
You know how AI right now, everybody's talking about artificial intelligence? It is happening now. It is happening in the news field. It is happening right now. People are, are writing papers in college just by going to AI and putting in the information. And what used to take, you know, uh, weeks to write and type, now they can get a paper and, and nobody can trace it. Nobody can track it. It's like it's taking over. You see, in, in, in secretarial work, it's taking over in news work. It's like this AI, artificial intelligence, is like there's so many signs saying the king is coming. Jesus is coming. And, and so we just we want to see others come into the kingdom because um, Jesus is talking here about the light. He seems to like the light because guess what? He is the light. Amen. How many of you here like living in southern, sunny California? I'm getting reports from our former churches. It's 15 degrees below zero. It's 30 degrees below zero. My goodness, we're stuck out here shoveling snow, and, uh, and everybody's hidden. One of the former uh, general, uh, secretary at, and from New England had moved to Florida and then moved back to New England, and he's saying, oh, sweet Florida, where art thou? He's like, he's like 14 degrees. So, amen, thank the Lord that we get to see a little bit more sun, a little bit more warmth. But who is the sun? It's Jesus. He's the son of righteousness. And it says here, um, verse 36, While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of the light. And so there's timing, right? There's timing. When does the sun? The sun rises, right? And then it's at its peak in the middle of the day. And then the sun sets. And then there's night. It means that the sun is not always here. And that's what he's also saying, is that you, you and I have to make our decision. Are we going to be children of the light? And we want to pull everybody that we can, influence everybody to get in. Get in. Get on board. And live that life. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to read verses 37 onward, but you're going to see that some people don't want that light. And uh, there's some people around us that, that, and, that don't want that light, but, but we're, going to, um, we're going to read verse 37. It says, And although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw the Lord and spoke to him. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many people in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And then Jesus cried out and said, he said, he who believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he and he who sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come as the light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come into, to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I, have, for I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. So in other words, what Jesus is saying, and what he was saying to the children of Israel, and what's being said in America today, in Canada today, and all around the world, and in the West, and in South America, and in Africa. If you look to me, and you find me on the cross, and you receive 
forgiveness of sins, you can be cleansed, you can be healed, you can be ready, you can be on fire for me. But if you reject me and you reject my words, then you're rejecting eternal life. And, um, and it's that serious. And so Jesus wants, he wants all people to come in and to receive that amazing grace that, and how sweet the sound is. And so um, it would be nice to close this morning in prayer for, for just the light of God um, to, to shine. There's, all of us here have some loved ones that need salvation, and, and they need to look to Jesus. And, and we want to be a part of them coming into the kingdom of God. And so we can say together with Jesus, thank you, God, for the cross. And Lord, thank you for empowering me. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to not fall asleep and, and to be seduced by this world, but to, but to stay you know, focused and stay in love with Jesus and, and stay steady at, at winning my generation for Jesus Christ. And we've all got our work cut out for us. But that's what Jesus, uh, you know, and he says, hey, bless you. you. You came out to the house of God. You love the house of God. You love the word of God. And, and that ministers to him. You can see each time we come to church, each time we pray, each time we open the Bible, we're saying, I love you, God. I need you, God. And, um, and he's saying, and I love you. Amen. So let's all stand up together and let's come to the Lord in prayer and in response to the word of God.